eyes. Let's talk about strength. Now, a material can be strong or not strong. Sometimes we can say the material is weak. I think that's fine. Now, strong or weak. Right now. So you can try to tear or break an object to test for its strength. Now, let me just give you an example. I have a piece of paper here. You see, the eye put a lot of strength to tearing this piece of paper. No. So what does this tell you about paper? It is actually pretty weak. Right now, okay? So paper is not strong. It tears really easily. Plastic is strong. Look at this girl happily trying to tear plastic, but she just couldn't do it. It does not tear easily. Now, flexibility. Now, I'm going to have an example of flexibility. Let me look for my long ruler. It's over here. Now, I have this ruler. We can say a material can be flexible or stiff. Now, look at this. Is it flexible? Yeah. Flexibility means the ability to bend something, okay? Bend something. So, you see? It's easy to bend, right? So, if it's easy to bend, then we say that this ruler is Flexible. Now let me show you another type of ruler that I have here. Now for this one, I'll show you that it is rather stiff. Let me try to bend it a little bit. You see, I put quite a lot of force, but I just couldn't bend much. You see, even when I swing, it didn't like flip to the other end so easily. So we can say that this ruler is stiff, okay? Let's go on. Now you can try to stretch or bend an object to test for its flexibility. So I just showed you, I bend it right now. So, teacher actually wants you to remember, during the exam, if you see this word bend in a question, it must mean flexibility. So they are testing you on the property, whether something is flexible or stiff. Okay, remember, I don't forget, okay? Metal is stiff, it is not flexible. So what this boy is trying to do is trying to you know, break a piece of metal. There you go. There the metal ring. Okay. Now, rubber can stretch. It is flexible. Now, so what is happening right now is trying to you know, bend, even bending ruler right now. Remember? Ooh, yep. Let's go on to the next property, transparency. Now, transparency in this world, there are three groups of transparency materials. Okay, there is classified under transparency. Now, first one, transparent object. Transparent object means you can see through. Now, the other one is called translucent object. And of course, the last one is called opaque object. Okay, now, Let's take a look. Huh? The transparency of a material refers to how much light can pass through it. Now we have three cups over here. First cup is a transparent cup. Second cup that you see down here is called a translucent cup. And the third cup that you see down here is called an opaque cup. Now, so meaning this one allows most light to pass through. When they allow most light to pass through, that's why you could see through it. This one allows some light to pass through it. When I say allows some light to pass through it, means you could see through but not very, very clear. And this one, it doesn't even allow any light to pass through it. That's why you couldn't see what is inside the car, okay? Now, next example, if we talk about bulbs, okay? This bulb, you could tell that this is a transparent bulb. You, know, you could see that it, you could see the filament inside. Now this one is a translucent bulb. Okay? And this is an opaque bulb. So opaque bulb does not allow light to pass through. Meaning you can't see what is on the inside. Okay? Now, next third properties: ability to float or sink in water. A material can float or sink in water. Okay, so I had wanted to do this experiment in, in the tuition center, you know, ask everyone to bring in an object 
This is my usual practice. So maybe you can do this with your mommy and daddy. Now you can take a few different items. You can take an eraser, a ball, a ping pong, or maybe you know a pencil, or favorite toy, Lego toy. Just bring that. And then you fill up a basin of water and you just drop one by one. You will observe whether they sink or float. Right now, okay, so take note, huh? please do so and try this with your parents together, okay? Even with your siblings. Let's do a simple experiment here now. So, the plastic bowl can float. There is a plastic bowl down here. I'm not sure if you can see it. If you use a big screen, I'm sure you can see that. A ceramic spoon, it sinks in water. So the ceramic spoon can sink. Now, next property, whether a material is waterproof. Now, when it is raining and you are about to go to school, what do you usually carry with you? Umbrella or a raincoat, right now? Both of them are called trans, you know, both of them are called waterproof materials. Waterproof materials meaning they do not allow water to pass through. When water did not pass through, of course you remain dry, okay? But when you walk with an umbrella or with a raincoat, you go to school along the way. Finally, when you reach the school, there's one part which will be wet. What is that? School shoes right now. How come? Because school shoes is not waterproof. They absorb water right now. That's why water could pass through them. So a waterproof material does not absorb water. Fabric absorbs water. Let's take a look. Now look at this two crazy person trying to play in water. Of course, you know they are going to get drenched and wet because their fabric, their t-shirt fabric uh, does not absorb water at all. Now umbrella and raincoat do not absorb water. Let's take a look at this one. Quite cute, huh? Yeah, this doggy needs an umbrella, no? So there is an inverted umbrella for the doggy. So the doggy will remain dry because the the umbrella does not absorb water, so we can say that the umbrella is waterproof. And of course, raincoat, okay? Now, we're going to choose the right property. Oh, sorry, right material. Now, meaning, sometimes we have to decide, when I want to make this object, should I use plastic? Should I use metal? Should I use something else? I have to think of the properties. Let me give you an example. Materials are chosen to make an object based on what the object is used for. So we have ceramic houses. So ceramic houses means it's used to make the bricks of this wall. Now, you think about this. Our HDB, we use cement wall right now. Why do we use cement wall? It's because it is strong, right now. Strong. You don't want to go up to a house that is seven levels high and then it starts collapsing. Wow. It must be strong. It must be able to withstand so much people standing on it, right now. Ceramic is strong, thus the wall cannot break easily. Glass is used to make window panes. Why? Imagine this, I have a house but don't have windows. I'll be living in darkness. So why do I have window panes? Because I want to see the scenery out there. Whoa, beautiful clouds. Right now, the window panes must be transparent to allow us to see through the glass. Okay? So glass is used as it's strong. It also allows most light to pass through so we can see through it. So the idea is, it is strong, it is transparent. Remember, we got to use our properties. Often, no one material has all the properties that an object needs. What do I mean by that? Huh? We usually see an object that is made of more than one material, like the shoes below. Now, so what I'm trying to tell you is, actually in every part of an object, you know, like let's say you want to talk about shoes, you want to talk about your school bag, even your pen, right now, 
all these are, they don't just use one material. Sometimes they use multiple materials. So let's take a look at this shoe. Now, this shoe is made out of fabric. So, fabric material. Why? I want it to be soft, you know? Yeah? The soles of the shoe is made of rubber because I want them to have more friction on the ground. I don't want to slip and fall, okay? And of course, you know sometimes when you want to tie shoelace over there, there will be some metal rings to hold the shoelace together, right now, okay? So that you can walk you know, comfortably, right now. And we are done. Now, so take note, take note, take notes, okay? So later on, you can rewind or replay this video and take down some notes, especially the seven materials and the five properties, okay? So I will see you all in the conference. See ya, bye!